chalk water sensors. Water sensors, or these rope sensors, will be found on many different Rheem products. Now, I've got a few different ones here, and they are all different. This is a condensate sensor for a hybrid water heater. This goes on the upper part of the unit, and it has a two-wire plug that plugs into the wiring harness. These are all different part numbers, as I mentioned. This is part number AP20946. And it's pretty short. It's got a long extension of wires to reach the plug, but the actual sensor itself is, you know, six or eight inches or so. This is the lower sensor of the hybrid unit. And it has four ports on the plug. Now, it's the same on the rope sensor here, and this is for a tankless water heater. Both four ports, however, they are different plugs. So if you are in a pinch and you need to use a different sensor, you're out of luck in this respect. These are going to only plug in where they were designed to, this one on the condensate lower part of the hybrid. This one is part of the kit for the tankless water heater. Now, how these work is simple. If you were to ohm any of these out, and we're going to say the upper part where the clasp is, we're going to call those port one and two, the lower ports three and four, they just have a jumper wire, not used for testing. The upper ports one and two, when these get wet, will close the circuit, notifying the heater that it has detected water. Uh, you can take these out, unplug them, get them out of the system, dry them out, they dry up pretty quick before you put them back into service. So, Real quick, we're going to go ahead and put a multimeter on these and get them wet, and we'll see what kind of readings we get, see if they differ between the different types of sensors. Okay, got my multimeter set up here. I have it turned to the ohm setting. That's how we're going to test these. Now I do have, this is a new multimeter for me. This one is auto ranging, and it has a, a wide range on the scale of, it, of what it'll test. My older one, did not test these as well. So if you've got a good auto ranging multimeter, you should have success with testing these and not get any type of uh, erroneous or false readings. So real quick, I'm going to call one and two the top two ports. This is the condensate sensor. Note the fine tipped leads here. If you don't have those, you're going to have a hard time getting in there and touching this together. All right, so there we go. Zero, open. So right now it does not have any connection. Let's simulate this condensate sensor getting wet. Almost immediately, almost immediately it picks up the water. Fantastic, okay. Now, look at that, I take it right out of the water and it goes right back to open. That should be easy to dry off and put back into service if you're having issues. Let's try the lower sensor on the hybrid unit. So here we have port one and two up top. Okay, open. Let's simulate some water on the ground. Oh, immediately, look at that. I think some of the literature states about 15 seconds or so, but that certainly wasn't 15 seconds. This is almost immediate. So it should notify you if you do start to leak water or the condensate gets too high immediately. Or at least it'll notify the water heater. Okay, now let's see here. Is it gonna be the same thing? Yeah, let's get the water off of it and you're good to go. You can probably wipe that down with the paper towel, but if you don't have to, you don't have to. All right, tankless. Tankless sensor. This has a real small plug on it. Now this one was part of the kit that comes with the tankless. It doesn't have a part number. The part number here for 
the hybrid on the lower side is the AP18944C. Try to hold that there so you can see it. And then this is the condensate. AP20946. Okay. Let's see what happens when we get our sensor wet here. Okay, look at that. Okay, this is a little bit different. Let me dry this off so I can show you. This is the sensor out of the tankless water heater. And the sensor is connected to three and four. It is real tight. Let's see if I can dry it off. Make a mess here. Okay, this is different. I'm going to try and dry this one off. Oh, it's still reading it. The other two out of the hybrid, I was able to simply just tap the water off and it would go back to an open. This one is not the case. And this one is testing on port three and four. One and two are just the jumper cable. It's just a loop wire there. This one, let's see if we get it real wet, if it'll go even higher. sure does okay I'll try this one more time here just to see if we can get it to dry off I'm gonna kind of spin it in the air see if that makes any difference if it doesn't well so be it All right, let's check it and see what we've got have a good connection here yeah it's still it's still closed it's lower uh, this is definitely going to be a sensor that's going to have to sit and dry out I will let this sit and dry out and then we'll see how long it takes before we can get it back to a an open okay so I said queso okay Three different sensors, different applications. The hybrid sensors, I can get those wet, tap them off, we're back in service. This guy here out of the tankless unit, got it wet, but it was still reading a closed circuit. So we're gonna have to let that dry out. Let's go ahead now and I'll show you how to remove and install these three on these particular units that we have here. We'll start with the hybrid and then we'll go to the tankless and I'll show you where this model goes. Okay, on the lower sensor, on the hybrid unit, we're going to start down here at the bottom and disconnect this. Then the sensor is going to pull right out, just like that. Now to reinstall this sensor, we're going to line this back up. I'll do this in real time here so you can kind of see I set this in here, give it a little twist and see it go down this tube and just an inch at a time, get that sensor right back down in there. It will go all the way and then you can reconnect it and you're good to go. Now the upper sensor and the hybrid unit. Has the plug right here. 
and the sensor itself sits down in that tray. So disconnect the clip. like so and you can gently reach down here and pop that out now to reinstall this sensor just carefully push it right back down in between these tabs on the condensation tray and you can reconnect your wire And there, it's that easy. On the high efficiency tankless water heater, your rope sensor will be inside of the cabinet. So you're gonna take six screws off to access this. Now this didn't come in this unit, this was part of a Wi-Fi kit purchased separately. It comes with the power adapter and the Wi-Fi module. And then this device here, which mounts inside of the cabinet and plugs into the power control board. The sensor is plugged in down here and it has a little clip, you disconnect. It runs back behind the control board over to the other side of the, the cabinet. And you can just pull those tabs up gently. Those tabs are also part of the kit, so they'll be placed wherever the installer has them. And there you have it. There is the plug. Okay, to reinstall this sensor, find the easiest way is to start up top and just kind of slide that back behind there. All right. And you can clip your sensor back down. These are just double-sided sticky tape clips so you can move them around, put your sensor, take your wire and find an acceptable route. And it just plugs in. Well, there you have it. Those are the three sensors that we're going to review today. The differences, how they're installed, how they're removed. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.